Newton's structure of proof by induction, which I explained in a bit more detail back then. Uh, the conjecture here is that the sum of R terms from R equals 1 to N uh, can be given by the formula a half N times N plus 1. We've already had a look at that as a in, in examples kind of 15, 16, using the, the standard formulas. We're going to prove that it's actually true for values of N greater or equal to 1. Okay, now a quick reminder of the structure of proof. What we're going to do is we're going to have an initial step proving the statement is true for the smallest possible value of N. Let's just do that first of all, and we'll come back to this. So the initial step is build the first domino. Uh, let's check it's true for the smallest possible value. So we're going to write down initial step. Prove true for n equals 1. We're told that n can be greater or equal to 1, so the smallest value is going to be n equals 1. So we need to show that. So we've got a left-hand side and a right-hand side. That's how we normally do it. So let's check the left-hand side, which is the sum uh, of the first r terms from r equals 1 to n. Well, n in this case is just 1. So we're basically saying we just want the value of all the terms from 1 to 1, which is just 1. On the right-hand side, we're given a, a formula here, or an expression at the moment, uh, a half n n plus 1. And when n is 1, then we've got this expression here, which gives us the value 1, which happens to be the same as the left-hand side. So what have we stated? What have we found here? Uh, as the right-hand side equals the left-hand side, it's true for n equals 1. Super important that you write down that phrase, true for n equals 1. We have established or put in place the first domino. What do we do next? Well, let's go back to the structure here. We're going to do what's called an instu inductive step, okay, which is that assume true for n equals k and then prove true for n equals k plus 1. So we do that in two parts. So let's write this down. Assume true for n equals k. Now, because we're assuming it to be true, what we do is we rewrite the formula, this whole thing up here. And where n appears, we're going to write k. So all we're doing is stating a formula. We're stating that sigma r from r equals 1 to k is equal to a half times k times k plus 1. You see, every time n appears in, on either side, we're going to replace it with a k. Now, we're saying that's true. In other words, we are giving ourselves a formula with which we can use later on, because we're saying that, that we reckon it's true for n equals k. So assume true for n equals k. Now, what we need to do is prove true for n equals k plus 1. We need to show if it's true or not. Okay, you can prove true or check if it's true for n equals uh, k plus 1. Okay, so let's see what we need to do. This is where example 17 comes into play because when n is k plus 1, we're actually trying to uh, show that this is true. We're working with sigma r from r equals 1 to k plus 1. Okay? Now, we don't actually have a value for that. But what we know from example 17 is that we can split that up into two bits. We're saying the sum up to the k plus 1 term is equal to the sum up to k terms plus the actual value 
when you substitute k plus 1 in. In other words, sigma r up to k plus 1 is equal to the sum of the first k terms in the sequence plus what happens when you put k in here, which in this case is just going to be, sorry, when you put, not k, k plus 1 in here, which is just going to be k plus 1. Okay? Now, the good news is that we actually have confidence that we know what that is because we've just defined it as a half times k times k plus 1. So here we go, we substitute a half times k times k plus 1, and we're going to add in another k plus 1. So the question is, what are we actually doing here? What are we trying to show? What we're trying to show here, we've kind of got a target. We would want, if it's going to be the same for k plus 1, we would want, although we can't state this with any certainty because we're trying to prove it, we would expect that wherever k appears in the formula, we've got k plus 1 appears. You see? So that kind of becomes what we call our target. And you don't really... That's, we can't say that's true, but we're kind of trying to manipulate our algebra so that... Let's try and put this in a, a group. Okay, so in other words, we're trying to get our answer to look like that. Is there any way in which we can get uh, this bit here to look like this bit over here? Well, what we usually try and do is take a common factor. You notice that we've got a common factor of k plus 1. So let's do that, k plus 1, and what we're left with is a half k plus 1. Okay, how does, does that look anything like it? Yeah, well, okay. Uh, what we could do, that you notice that our target's got a half as a common factor. So if we take a half here, and we'll write it as k plus 1, if in order to take a, a common factor of a half here, we would actually end up with uh, k plus 2. You see that? So that's me taking the half out as a common factor of a half k plus 1, and I've got a bracket with that k plus 2. Now, the reason why that's significant is that we can then split up that k plus 2 into a half times k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. Okay? Understand? So, in other words, we have recreated the initial uh, formula that we've defined for uh, n equals k, and we've shown that if you put k plus 1 in, or the k plus 1, uh, the sum of k plus 1 terms, you actually get the same formula, but with k plus 1 instead of k. In other words, it's consistent. The, the rule, the conjecture works for the next term beyond n equals k. So what we can say here is that if it's true, for n equals k, then we've shown that it's also true for n equals k plus 1. So the question is, is it true for n equals k? Is there any value that we actually know it's true for? Well, we sh showed at the very beginning that it's true for n equals 1. As true for n equals 1, then true, and this is really important, by induction, you've got to put that in, for all n. In other words, if it's true for n equals 1, we've shown that kind of k plus 1, the next term, is n equals 2. But if it's true for n equals 2, we've shown that if n, if, you know, we've shown that it's true for the next term up, which is n plus n equals 3, and so on, and it just knocks all the dominoes down, and it's true then for all n, n greater or equal to 1. And that's the proof by induction. So it follows the, the script that I'm sure I'm just going to zip back to there. We've kind of worked through and we've written our logical argument at the end. So initial step, inductive step, and our argument at the end. And that's our proof by induction. I hope that makes sense. There's other proofs. Uh, and as we go on, you'll see the fact the shape stays the same. Uh, the key thing is to then do that. It's the, the key creative bit is actually this part here, how we get 
uh, down to the kind of targets, and we'll keep talking about that as we go along. Okay, I hope that makes sense, but go on to the other examples so that you build up that knowledge.